I'm literally running on no sleep right now. Anyways, hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I am going to be talking about some of my most anticipated reads for the beginning of 2024. So first of all, I just want to get the elephant in the room out of the way. So sorry I'm filming like this. The setup is not what I plan. Um, but I did just move into our new place in November, so I'm still kind of setting things up, I'm still trying to figure out my lighting, some of my stuff is still packed up, so I don't have my ring light. So, right now, this is what it's going to look like for this video. Um, I don't typically usually plan, plan to film at night anyways, but this was, um, unfortunately, the only time I could figure out when to film um, with the holiday season and all the plans and everything. So, just for this video, bear with me, okay? But, I wanted to hurry up and get this video out and just um, post for a couple days in January so that way you guys know I'm here and I haven't just disappeared all of a sudden like last time. So, yeah. But, I wanted to start off the new video, the new year um, with my first video with an anticipated reads, I figured what way to start off a new year by talking about books that are coming out this new year. Um, so I have a specific few in mind um, that are coming out between January and May. And these are the ones I've just been really looking forward to. I'm super excited to get them. I may even pre-order them when I get the chance. So we'll see. The first one I have on this list that I think is an anticipated read for a lot of people in January. I'd be surprised if it wasn't. And that is The House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J. Moss. So this is the third book in the Crescent City trilogy series. Who knows what it's going to be for now. Um, but this one comes out January 30th. So on almost the last day of the, of the month. Um, I'm really looking forward to this book. Because where we left off in the second book. Which was House of Sky and Breath. Um, threw everybody off. Like, it just did make sense. <laughs> so, I'm really nervous because I really loved the first book. And then the second book came and I just, like, could not. In like, I, there were some things I enjoyed and then there were some things I was like, I don't understand where this came from and it doesn't make sense. So, I'm kind of nervous but a little excited to see where she's going in this third book. I'm intrigued to see if this will be the actual last book or if this is going to be something else. Because she could go anyway with this, I guess. And it's going to be interesting. I technically was trying to at least get halfway through the Court of Thorns and Roses series um, before picking up this third book. Did I actually do that? I started the first book, which was a goal, which is great. Like, I mean, I started and finished it. So I kind of got through almost that goal. I just didn't pick up the second book. Um, and I'm not, there's no way I'm going to do that before January 30th, I don't think. So I'm just going to go in <laughs> and hope for the best. But yeah, definitely looking forward to it. I'm not even reading the synopsis of this. I want to go in blind because I feel like if I read the synopsis, it's going to make me even more anxious or nervous or whatever, so. But just where we left off in that second book, she could go any way. She could do anything. And that's that's what's making me a little bit nervous overall because uh, she's too much power right now. All right, so then the next book I have on this list is A Reckless Oath by Kaylee Smith. Um, this is the second book in A Ruinous Fate, which I read in 2023. I really enjoyed it for the most part. So um, I am looking forward to the second book, which is A Reckless Oath, and it comes out also January 30th. Um, I'm not in a hurry to buy this, to be honest. I'll probably borrow it from the library or something, but I'm intrigued enough by where the first book ended to see what she does next. I think she did a creative job of creating such a individual and world that like was very different. It wasn't something I'd read before. Um, that I'm intrigued to see where she, what she does with it in the second book. Um, especially because in the first book you have two characters who are trying to break this curse and then at the end something wonky ends up happening to where I think they just 
make it worse somehow. So I'm intrigued enough to borrow the second book and see what happens. So let's see, A Vicious Game by Muscle Bear is the next book I'm super excited for. I'm like so hyped for this series. I super duper enjoyed it. Um, if, in case you, if you have not heard me talk about A Broken Blade, I haven't talked about it enough then because I really enjoyed the series so far. And so I loved the first book. Um, really loved the second book. It ended on such a weird note that I'm so glad that the third book comes out February 6th, like early this year, so I don't have to wait super long to get my hands on it. But the sad thing is that I know as soon as I get my hands on it, I'm gonna read it, and then I gotta wait a whole nother, uh, a whole nother chunk of time before the next book comes out, and that's gonna make me go into a depression, I feel like. But, um, this series is just so good to me. I'm not going to tell you the synopsis of the third book because it's the third book, but in the first book it, it follows um, this kind of assassin to the king who's just been really down on her luck. She's kind of given up on trying to fight back for her people against the king um, to save her people, and so she's kind of just been doing his bidding the past few hundred years or so, and one day, um, she gets her spark back when she encounters this, like, other, I don't want to say assassin, but, like, rebellion leader who's trying to, um, make moves against the king, and she kind of develops her spark and her drive and her fight again by interacting with this person and just, like, joining in the rebellion, um, there's just so many details that I want to say and I can't because I don't want to spoil it. So that's, I'm going to leave it at that. But it is a rebellion story. And so I just really love where we start, where we start out, where we see the character. She like is literally an alcoholic, a functioning alcoholic. She doesn't have anybody to truly care for her or that she cares about. Um, really, she's kind of just given up on life and she's just hell-bent on killing herself. Um, not like intentionally but if it just happens it happens and then as you get further into the story she just finds her passion and her drive and um she um develops her motivation again to um usurp the king and make the world a better place essentially so the next book i have on this list is a fate inked in blood and that is by danielle l jensen um and that comes out on february 27th so danielle l jensen did the bridge kingdom trilogy um which i really enjoyed overall so i'm excited to check out another series by her um she's technically continues continuing the bridge kingdom it's just um i think it's almost like every two books is a new set of characters within the same world um so i'm definitely going to continue that like i have i think the third one in that series and i want to look forward and i have um the first book in her dark shore series which i definitely want to read and prioritize this year um but this new series also sounds really interesting and so i want to prioritize that too i just want to basically read all her books because they just sound interesting um but I'm going to read the synopsis because it's the best way I can explain it. So, a shield maiden blessed by the gods battles to unite a nation under a power-hungry king. While also fighting her growing desire for his fiery son in this Norse-inspired fantasy romance. So, bound in an unwanted marriage, Freya spends her days gutting fish but dreams of becoming a warrior. And of putting an axe in her boorish husband's back. Freya's dreams abruptly become reality when her husband betrays her to the region's jarl, landing her in a fight to the death against his son, Bjorn. To survive, Freya is forced to reveal her deepest secret. She possesses a drop of a goddess's blood, which makes her a shield maiden with magic capable of repelling any attack. It was foretold such a magic would unite the fractured nation of Skaland beneath the one who controls the shield maiden's feet. Believing she's destined to rule Skaland as king, the fanatical Jarl binds Freya with a blood oath and orders Bajoran to protect her from their enemies. Desperate to prove her strength, Freya must train to fight and learn to control her magic, all while facing perilous tests set by the gods. The greatest test of all, however, may be resisting her forbidden attraction to Bajoran. 
If Freya succumbs to her lust for the charming and fierce warrior, she risks not only her own destiny, but the fate of all the people she swore to protect. So that just sounds really cool to me, and I'm really excited. And yeah, super looking forward to it. So the next book I have is Finley Donovan Rolls the Dice, which is number four in this series by El, Camas El Casamano. This comes out March 5th. I'm really looking forward to this. I really enjoy this series so much. It's my first kind of cozy mystery series um, that I had started a few years ago when it first came out and I just haven't been disappointed since. And I think this may be the last book. I'm not really positive but I look forward to just like going with the flow, seeing where the characters are at, seeing what the author does next in the story because I know it's just gonna make me laugh and it's gonna give me good vibes. Um, this series is about a lady named Finley Donovan who is a single mom of two recently divorced and she is a kind of like a downtrodden author who's trying to get her spark back into her writing and one day someone mistakes her as a hit woman and she kind of goes along with it for a bit because she's not sure to, whether to take this seriously or not because she can't believe that someone would actually be convinced that she's a hit woman until she realizes how serious this is and someone dies on her watch <laughs> and then she has to basically get herself out of this conundrum and the situation without getting arrested and from there the series just kind of spawns into other scenarios where she just gets stuck in by happenstance so I'm really excited to see what the fourth book brings to the series. Next I have A Witch's Guide to Magical Innkeeping and this one comes out to ap April 1st by Sangu Mandana. So this is a lady that wrote uh, The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches, which I read that in last year and I thought it was so cute. It was so cozy. I really enjoyed the storytelling and the writing and the characters. So I'm really looking forward to giving this one a chance as well because I want those vibes back. You know what I mean? Like I know it's gonna be a completely different story, new characters, all that. I'm totally cool with that. I just want the vibes. Um, so this is Sarah Swan was once one of the most powerful witches in Britain. Then she re resurrected her great aunt Jasmine from the very recently dead, lost most of her magic, befriended a semi-villainous talking fox, and was exiled from her magical guild. Now she helps Aunt Jasmine run an inn in Lancashire, where she deals with her quirky guests' shenanigans, tries to keep the talking fox in check, and longs for a magical future she lost. When she learns about an old spell book that could hold the secret to restoring her power, she finds herself turning to Luke Larson, a gorgeous and icy historian who might be the only person who can help her unlock the book's mysteries. The fact that he also happens to be her one-night stand from years ago is totally irrelevant. Running an inn, reclaiming lost magic, and trying not to fall in love is a lot for anyone, but Sarah is about to discover that she doesn't have to do it alone, and that the weird, wonderful family she's made might be the best magic of all. So again, it gives me the vibes of the first book. So I'm here for it. I'm excited. Looking forward to it. Comes out April 2nd, in case I didn't say that already. Next, I have Funny Story by Emily Henry. This drops April 23rd. I'm not even reading the synopsis. I'm just gonna buy this shit. Like, this lady is an auto buy for me. I've loved every book she's written. Um, it's, it's gonna be bought. It's gonna be read, no matter what's going on. And I'm not even gonna read the synopsis. Because I just wanna buy it, and I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna consume it, and I'm gonna be there. So, that's that. Loved everyone. I think if I had to rank them, I would have to go um, Beach Read because it has a sentimental place in my heart. Beach Read, um, Book Lovers, People We Meet, and then Happy Place. Or like Happy Place, People We Meet. So they're interchangeable for me. So just love them so much. And I'm just really, really excited for this next book. Alright. The last book I have on this list is The Honey Witch by Sydney Shields. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be so honest. When I saw this cover, it got me. I was like, this looks like some cozy stuff. So I just put it on my list. <laughs> um, it comes out May 14th. We're about to learn what the synopsis is together, okay? But I just know it's gonna be a vibe for me. Okay, it's gonna be a vibe, but the honey witch of Innisfree can never find true love. That is her curse to bear. But when a young woman who doesn't believe in magic arrives on our island, sparks fly in this deliciously sweet debut novel of magic. 21-year-old Marigold Claude has always preferred the company of the spirits of the meadow to any of the suitors who've tried to woo her. So when her grandmother whisks her away to the family cottage on the tiny isle of Innisfree, with an offer to train her as the next honey witch, she accepts immediately. Where her newfound magic and independence come with a no one can fall in love with the honey bitch. 
When Lottie Burke, a notoriously grumpy skeptic who doesn't believe in magic, shows up on her doorstep, Marigold can't resist the challenge to prove to her that magic is real. But soon Marigold begins to care for Lottie in all ways she never expected. And when darker magic awakens and threatens to destroy her home, she must fight for more than her new home at the risk of losing her magic and her heart. So again, that just it just sounds like my stuff, my cup of tea. I'm I'm just really looking forward to it. I need it in my hands. I need to read it. The fact that it's queer too. Just throw it in there, buddy. Just throw it on in. Into the basket. Take my money now. And those are all my kind of anticipated reads for the beginning of the year so far. If I want to be technical, I do have an honorable mention, and that is Goldfinch. And I just have to mention it because this book sp sprung on us. We thought gold was going to be it. We thought it was the last book. We thought we were done. And then Raven Kennedy came out and just surprised him. It was, it was like, psych, you thought it was the last book. And I have another book coming out. So I gotta mention this. I'm gonna keep mentioning it until it comes out because it's an honorable mention. Because who who wanted this? I mean, I, I guess I did because I get to stay in the world a little bit longer. But I just wasn't expecting it. She threw a wrench in my plan. I was like gonna be a co feeling accomplished at the end of 2023. I was like, I'm about to finish a series on time. And then she said, Sight, there's another book. And so I said, Bet, here's my money. I'm gonna buy it. Like, it's gonna be bought. It's fine. But you got me. You threw me for a wrench there because I had plans. And you threw me off my plans. So now we're here with this honorable mention. So, I'm not even going to read the synopsis, because it's the last book, supposedly, in the series. Uh, have I finished the four fifth book? Absolutely not. Did I start it? Yes. <laughs> Do I know when I'm going to finish? No. <laughs> but that's okay, because I have until the end of August to finish it and get this next book, or this last book. We'll see. <laughs> But there you go, kids. Those are my anticipated reads of 2024, or the beginning of 2024, I should say. Um, gonna do another one of these before the summer hits, so y'all know what I'm looking forward to in the summer months, when I will be free to do whatever I want. Yeah. So, uh, thank you guys for watching, if you made it this far. Uh, if you are wanting to support my videos please like it down below if you want to see more videos from me hit that subscribe button if you have any comments questions concerns leave those in the comment section down below if you have books that you're anticipating that i didn't mention please leave those in the comment section i'm definitely looking forward to finding more books to anticipate i just i literally last year i was kind of on a unofficial official ban book buying ban essentially so I really wasn't paying attention to all the things coming out in 2024. Um, most of these I mentioned are sequels for a reason. So if there are some things that I maybe didn't mention that you think I would enjoy totally put those in the comments. I'm looking. My eyes are are going. I'm not really on a book buying ban this year in 2024. At least I'm not planning on it. So it could happen. Um, if you're not good at commenting, I'm going to go ahead and say leave me an emoji. You guys are awesome flowers in the world for opiates.